The alchemists of the Middle Ages inherited this tradition and finally transmitted it to the Rosicrucians of the 17th century. Michael Meyer, who was a member of the Rosicrucian fraternity of the time, said, Our origins are Egyptian, Brahmanic, issued of the mysteries of Eleusis and Samothrace, the mages of Persia, the Pythagoreans, and the Arabs. Is that to say that the ancient heritage would remain frozen in the world of the 17th century? No. It was perpetuated throughout the following centuries and gave birth to many Rosicrucian persuasions. In the 18th century, the most important of these movements was known as the Order of the Rosy Cross of Gold of the Ancient System. It had many illustrious members, among whom are the Prince Frederick Wilhelm, the Duke Ferdinand of Brunswick, Friedrich Christoph Oettinger, and Nikolai Novikov. In the 19th century was the Order of the Rosy Cross founded by Josephin Paledin that attracted the most attention because of the exhibition of unusual paintings he organized in Paris. Famous artists such as Charles Filiget, Jean Delville, Émile Bernard, friend of Toulouse-Lautrec and Gauguin, Georges Defil, and Eugène Croisset presented their works at these exhibitions. The admitted goal of this Rosicrucian order was to restore in all its splendor the ideal, with tradition for basis and beauty as mean. Another school of thought, Freemasonry, was born in England during the 18th century. Tracing its traditional origins to Hiram, presumed architect of the Temple of Solomon, it borrowed much from the Rose Cross which caused some authors, such as Johann Gottlieb Bühle or Thomas de Quincey, to say that it was an emanation of Rosicrucianism. In any case, Freemasonry created as early as 1757 the degree of the Knight Rose Croix. Still considered today by some of Masonic persuasion to be one of Masonry's most prestigious degrees. Among the most eminent members of Rosicrucian Freemasonry of that time were, to name a few, the Count of St. Germain, Cagliostro, Jean-Baptiste Villamos, and Martinez de Pasquale. The latter created the Order of the Elus Cohen, in which the highest degree was the Ro Qua. Since the beginning of the 20th century, the Rosicrucian heritage is perpetuated in the world by the Antiquus Mysticusque Ordo Rosae Crucis, or in other words, by the ancient and mystical order of the Rose Cross. Open to men and women of any nationality, any religion, and any social class, Amorc transmits traditional teachings covering 12 degrees. Since 1909, it is offered in a written form. That being said, Rosicrucians can gather in lodges to hold collective work sessions if they wish to do so. These teachings are founded on the oral tradition of the order, such as it was done in past centuries. It is also in these lodges, in which the decorum is most often inspired by ancient Egypt, that initiations into the various degrees are conferred. What do the Rosicrucian teachings talk about? If we believe esoteric literature, the teachings cover a vast domain and integrate the great themes of tradition, among which are the origins of the universe, the nature of time and space, the laws of matter, life, and consciousness, the mysteries of death, life after life, and reincarnation,
traditional symbolism and the science of numbers. The Rosicrucians are also interested in the ontological links that exist between humans and God, whom they consider to be the grand architect of the universe, that is, the absolute intelligence which is at the origin of all creation and all that it contains on the visible and invisible planes. In this regard, their study focuses more on the divine laws than on God specifically. In parallel to their specific teachings, the Rosicrucians advocate a philosophy that is founded on spiritual alchemy. It does not consist of transforming base metals into gold, as did the ancient alchemists but of transmuting the imperfections of human nature into their opposite qualities, such as pride into humility, selfishness into generosity, intolerance into benevolence. To apply this philosophy, Rosicrucians work to perfect themselves in order to become better in their judgment and behavior. For them, evil exists on earth only because humans are complacent in their weaknesses and do not sufficiently aspire to good. Rosicrucian humanism, therefore, consists in improving the world by improving oneself. This caused a contemporary author to remark that the soul of the Rose Cross is an integral part of the soul of the Occident, which is humanist and spiritual. It is one of its facets, or one of its jewels, sparkling of beauty, love, and purity. Preoccupied by the pace of the world, and concerned about contributing to its evolution, in March 2001 the Rosicrucians published a fourth manifesto, the Positio Fraternitatis Rose Crucis. While the three manifestos published in the 17th century were intended for the intellectual elite, this new manifesto is intended for a wider audience. In a general manner, this manifesto gives a report on the state of humanity that the Rosicrucians judge very worrisome. According to them, the world has become too individualistic and materialistic, which explains the crisis we are confronted with in many domains. To solve this crisis, the Rosicrucians, therefore, appeal for more humanism and spirituality. In order for the earth to become a place of peace, harmony, and fraternity.